Deep side pod design. Dude, it's just such a god. I don't like the red is like, you know how there's like matte black and like silver. It looks like matte red. Like it looks good, you know. Like it looks really dope. I dig it. I absolutely dig it. What is going on, guys? It is JJ here, back with a new video. And today, people told me not to take a look at this video. I I have to. I absolutely have to. The race has been such an informative YouTube channel uh, at making these F1 car videos, and I need to know more about the Ferrari. I think it is the best looking car uh, of 2022. Now I want to know more about the design, more about the new features. Uh, we watched the original launch um, instead of watching the the race's video detailing the car, but now I I want to know if Ferrari are going to be able to compete in 2022. Because, I mean, you guys probably know what they've done and what they've updated and what they've fixed uh, to try and compete with the likes of, of McLaren, Mercedes, and, and Red Bull. But I don't. I don't exactly know what's happening. So, we're going to watch the race video. Obviously, let me know your thoughts on the Ferrari's design. Uh, I think it is the best looking, but the Aston Martin looks really good too. But yeah, anyways, let me know your guys' thoughts on it down in the comments below. And let's get into the video. As well, guys, you can find the original video down in the description below. It's on the race. You're watching the Aramco 2022 F1 Car Reveal Series. The Ferrari F175, named in celebration of 75 years of the prancing horse, is the car Formula One's most famous team hopes will propel it back into title contention. It certainly pulled out all of the stops it thanks to what gorgeous, team principal Mattia Bonotto has described as a brave Ferrari to take on the challenges of F1's dramatic regulation changes. When it comes I mean, to thinking outside dramatic. the box, the phrase take use of the design approach, he must have been talking about Ferrari's unique side pod design. Dude, it's just such a god. I don't, like, the red is like, you know how there's like matte black and like silver? It looks like matte red. Like, it looks good, you know? Like, it looks really dope. I dig it. I absolutely dig it. This area is the one that has produced the most variations in the 2022 cars we've seen so far, but no team has gone as aggressive as Ferrari has. Ferrari has taken a bold approach knowing that it needs to get back to the front this year after its recent struggles, with its last victory coming in Singapore in 2019 courtesy of Sebastian Vettel. Mm -hmm. Ferrari has undoubtedly been bold with the F175. The question is, will it bring back the glory days, or has it perhaps gone too far? in trying to outsmart the rest. With the help of the race's technical expert Gary Anderson and illustrator Rosario Giuliana, let's take a look at the car. Oh, that just looks let's so get good. straight into the side pods. Yes, so far, yes, most please. teams have been on a spectrum stretching from the McLaren and Williams style minimalist design all the way to Aston Martin's long wide side pods with aggressive undercuts. Which also that Aston, I think that Aston Martin, like the long side pods going up to the driver, like seat, I think that looks super, super sick. And obviously the, the undercurrent and the flow under the tires on the Aston Martin look better too, to be to be completely honest. I like the Ferrari red. Um I I wish oh, Aston Martin would go to the, the green and like design, silver. But it has taken a very different approach with what Gary Anderson has described as valleys in the side pod surface shape. Looking at the front of the side pods, the radiator inlet is conventional, located as high as possible, and uses width rather than the maximum permitted height to get the required opening sizes. Judging by the side of the rollover bar inlet, most of its cooling is being done through these side pod inlets. These exit through the louvres on the top surface of the side pod, which is something we have also seen from Aston Martin. But it differs dramatically from Aston Martin on the top surface of the side pods. Really? This is where the valley comes in. Effectively, the two sides of the valley are the front of the side pod at the top of the radiator inlet and the rear ahead of the forward leg of the top rear suspension wishbone. <laughs> the regulations allow a maximum radius of 50mm in this concave shape. As Gary Anderson points out, it might make sense to sweep the top surface downward to help contain the low energy airflow emerging from the louvres, but they are closer to the centre of the car, and this shape will also compromise the packaging under the skin. It's also unusual that the shape of the side pod turns upwards at the rear of the side pod, when normally this would either have a downwash element or at least aim at the beam wing. The aggressive undercut on the front part of the side pod then effectively comes to nothing, where the side pod shape becomes more boxy further back. Anderson so believes he, like, this gives it the apart, or is it a good thing? Been designed in two parts and doesn't entirely meet in the middle. So they're ripping this design apart? 
Oh no, Ferrari. Oh it's no, possible. Ferrari. This truncated undercut exists to act as an extra diffuser that scavenges airflow out from under the front corner of the underfloor. However, there's nothing on the floor design we've seen that assists with this, but perhaps that is something that is hidden on the launch car. That makes it a large, square side pod with little undercut leading to the coat bottle area, so let's see what happens when the car runs for real. Oh the coat no. bottle is relatively old fashioned, it starts very abruptly with a sidewall undercutting the top area, which is used as a cooling outlet. Like the Williams, the bodywork simply stops at the front of the rear tyres. Turning our attention to the front of the car, Ferrari does not have a continuous slot gap between the first and second elements. The main plane is attached directly to the nose. To reduce the stagnation point for the airflow hitting the nose, Ferrari has gone for a pointy design. There's a possibility this could be a launch spec design that won't be seen when the car hits the track, mm. but if it is a fake nose, Ferrari has gone further than some other teams in designing its own alternative, rather than simply copying the F1 show car that was released last year. The front element of the front wing has a large spoon section in the middle, which is quite wide and also lower. This is about trying to make this area work to produce front downforce. The front two elements mount the front wing to the nose, and the third and fourth elements run into the sides of the nose. The end plates have the customary ski ramp on the outer surface. This helps with managing the tyre squirt and the negative effect that could have on the performance of the front wing. Mm. Looking at the nose itself, it's more akin to the Williams, with the top surface more curved. I, the Williams this does look good too. This will passing over it Maybe to I just go like around that the sides of the nose know. more easily. The front suspension is a conventional pushrod actuated double wishbone, ending speculation about whether Ferrari would switch to pull rods. With the McLaren, yeah, that with the McLaren team. That also suggests that what we saw from the Haas, which uses Ferrari components, was broadly accurate. There's also a small amount of anti-dive on the top wishbone, either to mitigate dive under braking or to give more control over the weight coming off the trailing edge of the front wing. The turning vane at the front of the sideboard looks like it's to the maximum length permitted. Mm. This is there to separate the turbulent weight coming off the rear of the front tyre and ensure it passes along the outside of the sideboard as hoped. Ferrari also has a secondary dive plane mounted on the chassis to floor mounting keel. The outer trailing corner of this will set up a strong vortex to pass along the inner corner of the inner side and top surface of the underfloor. This is a really the great design. The leading edge of the underfloor has a relatively high inlet that sweeps downwards, but the leading edge is also quite small, meaning it will be fairly critical in how it responds to the angle of attack of the airflow. By sweeping downwards as it goes outboard, it allows a little more space outboard for the undercut side pod leading edge. This starts off from the keel under the chassis, okay. but then it more He's saying, I'm not going to lie to you guys, he's saying a lot of technical stuff that I'm a little lost on. Um, let me know what you guys think about the Ferrari's design. Obviously, the Fer I think the Ferrari looks really, really good. Um, they don't really like the boxy design, like how wide it is, obviously, and the air inlets and like that little undercurrent. I think the side pods also look really, really sick. And I think the design is maybe not one that's like a title winning one, but one that they want to put in contention. And I think the drivers are, are going to really, really, hopefully like it. Um, and I hope it kind of drives well. So let me know what you guys think about the Ferrari down in the comments below. Uh, and yeah, go check out the, the Ferrari launch video. I actually had a lot of fun watching the launch. Um, I was a little overcritical of the Ferrari owner from the Fiat Group um, and the team director, but we live and we learn. You know, thank you guys so much for watching them. And peace.